90.2 FM and I'm Perry Guidry and uh, today I've got Rory Duff with me. So good morning Rory. Morning Perry. Um, what is your connection to the Bristol Energy Mapping Project? Uh, the uh, mapping project is something I instigated uh, recently when I took over running the Bristol Dowser Society. Uh, we thought it would be a good, a good way of engaging people in Bristol into finding out more about the energy lines within their area, within their city, and how it affects them, and uh, also increasing the numbers in, in the local society. So, what are energy lines? Are they the same as ley lines? Yeah, in, in, in the terminology you need to be a little bit careful with, but, but typically um, a ley line is a, is a straight alignment that's uh, drawn up along a map between holy sites like holy wells, churches, and things like that. And what, what we say with, with true, eight, true ley lines have, in all cases, a couple of earth energy lines that run pretty much along the length of that straight alignment. I'll give you an example. The St. Michael and St. Mary earth energy lines are, are quite well known about. They say run through Glastonbury and Avebury. And uh, it it's follows an alignment, which you could say then was a, a true ley line. And that alignment runs from Cornwall all the way up through to East Anglia. So there's a, the example, the alignment is the true ley line, and every true ley line has a, a pair of Earth energy lines. So um, you can discover them by dowsing? Yes, that's correct, yeah. So how does dowsing work? Okay, uh, well originally I started dowsing uh, for water for farmers in Africa. Uh, and the way we think it uh, now works is, is on a, a subconscious level. Uh, if you get down to the, the minutest parts of things, it's in matter, you're looking at electrons and vib atoms and these things vibrate and anything that has a vibration has a resonance and on a subconscious level this resonance can be picked up by our own matter which resonates as well on the subconscious level. So what we think is, is that well, you have two sets of resonances that hit each other like waves and, and that interaction is something that our subconscious can sense but yet our conscious mind can't. So what we use is, is devices like uh, dowsing rods, pendulums, uh, you can use forked sticks, you can use your fingers, and there's other things you can use. And what that does is it actually helps us connect from our conscious mind to our subconscious mind. A bit like asking you, yourself to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, you know, you're asleep, you're subconscious, and yet it still manages to wake you up at 6 o'clock in the morning. What we do is we ask to find something that we're aware of, that we're connected to, we understand the resonance, for instance, we resonance with the water, we're used to it, and we built up that, uh, that sensitivity to that resonance of water. And then when we ask ourselves to tap into our subconscious to find that, we can then pick up that same water through the reaction in the dowsing rod. So how, how can you prove that the lines exist? Uh, it, it, it's, it's fairly simple, actually. Uh, although we can't see them, I know one or two people who are able to see these lines, what we do is we set up uh, blind and double blind experiments uh, to make sure that uh, what we're not doing is confusing ourselves. And typically what we would do is we would uh, establish where uh, some energy lines were, where we'd map them, and then we'd bring somebody along who didn't know that area, who also knew how to douse, and ask them to see if they could map the same area and see whether they'd come up with the same uh, dowsing responses that we had. And in all cases, uh, they do. And, and when you're finding that people continually see the lines in the same place and they're finding the same thing other people are doing, then um, that's like a, a, a double experiment, a repeatable experiment as well. And, and what's the significance of these lines? Well, the first thing is that's significant to, is, is the numbers of them. Uh, they are literally all over the place. And there's various types of lines. There are some very, very wide lines, um, and, and there are increasingly narrower lines. But just about everywhere you go, there are energy lines of a certain width. And this, this has an effect on, on, uh, on, on where people live and where people work. In fact, if you look over in, in the Far East and the Asian markets where they, they buy and sell property, uh, very, very rarely has any of these uh, tr transactions ever take place without a Feng Shui priest uh, first looking at the the chi and the natural chi in the area and the effect of a building on the chi in the area before anyone moves in because they know that chi is a very important part of uh, the siting of the building and the effect of, of people working there or living there 
And uh, I think what we're already finding here in this, in this country uh, under term called geopathic stress is that some people have great difficulty living in some buildings. And in fact, even when you go looking for new houses, some people will often think, well, I get a good feeling about this, or, oh, no, I don't like this feeling at all. There's nothing they can tangible they can actually say why, but in actual fact, there's, there's, a, there's an energy in there, an energy line probably, that's giving them that good feeling or, or that bad feeling. And uh, an awareness of that can help people live in these properties. And, and uh, in, in, if you know about these lines and what they can do, they can be incredibly positive things. In fact, energy lines enhance emotions. So if you're feeling slightly positive, they can be very, very positive. But if you're feeling slightly negative, they can make you very, very negative. So an awareness of these energy lines, especially if they run through, you, through your, your house or if you're in sleeping on energy lines, we find that people are having really troubled sleep sometimes with some energy lines running through that, where they sleep. It's very simple. We can actually move those energy lines and or we can teach people about them and their awareness of them can help them live and work with them and, um, and actually benefit from them. And, and what's important about where they cross over? Well, this is the really interesting thing because from the scientific side of it, uh, which was of interest to me as a geologist, uh, what is the reality? Where are these lines found? And no one had really done any exercises on mapping these, these lines. And as mapping is inherent in, in uh, what one does as a geologist, I set out to, to map uh, the area uh, that I was living in at the time, which was in Tippenham in, in Wiltshire, map where these energy lines were. Because once you find the reality of where they are, where they were, you can begin to understand what on earth is going on. And what we found, first of all, was that there's a lot more lines, as I said before, that are existing everywhere. But where they cross over, it's like the, the power has increased. And where you find lots of the major lines, the, the big St. Michael and Mary type lines, which are about 30 paces wide, uh, where they cross over, you find some interesting things happening. Typically, you'll find them crossing over in Glastonbury, where there are four 30 pace wide energy lines crossing over. Avebury, a lot of energy lines crossing over there as well. And other really interesting sites around the UK, like Royston Cave in, in, uh, up near uh, Luton in, in Bedfordshire, which is uh, an interesting place from a, a Knights Templar. Uh, stronghold up there. But what we find is that when they cross over, two interesting things happened. There was a link between churches and cathedrals and ancient sacred places like, like stone circles or dolmens. And it appeared to be a connection. These lines would connect these places together. And that sort of stimulated, well, why on earth have we got energy lines crossing over in churches? And a very strong point, as well as in these sacred places like Avery. Uh, the Ord Serum ley line, discovered by Alfred Watkins, is the most famous. Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, the Watkins uh, lays originally were, uh, he was actually looking at ancient paths and trackways. And uh, that, that's what he was uh, looking at. And probably not quite the same thing we were talking about with energy lines. Mm. But uh, he was certainly the first to start looking at ancient uh, lines where mm. people used to walk. Now, there is a connection to energy lines because... Uh, what we find in the past is that uh, a lot of people have walked these energy lines and it, as a form of pilgrimage to a sacred site or to a place where everyone comes to, to, to pray and get together. Okay, and t typically you, you find uh, in, in other places of the world, like uh, in, in Australia, uh, in, the Aborigines uh, walk what's called song lines and, and they sing. Uh, and these lines are, are also energy lines, uh, but they, they, they walk along them, not just for uh, pilgrimages, but also as ways of navigation. And uh, singing was that one way of connecting with the lines, but dowsing is another way of connecting with them. And, and this, they indeed were used as navigational aids in, in the past, as we find these lines do stretch out across the oceans. So um, that, 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 the lays, if you like, that Watkins found were... The, the, the tracks that he was finding were particularly straight and it's quite possible that some of those straight tracks were in fact people who followed these lays. And the, the St Michael's lines, the most well known, um, that, that stretches further than any other doesn't it? Uh, the St Michael line is one of two, mm. they're all in pairs and, and, and its partner is the St Mary line and um, these things actually have no end. They, yeah. they continue. In fact, the line is probably itself uh, the wrong description of what it is. Uh, you have to think about these things as uh, they have a width 
but their, their width doesn't diminish at height or at depth. It, it goes down into the earth and it goes up into the sky. They're like long corridors. Mm -hmm. But the edges of these lines, people douse them slightly differently where the edges are. What we find is that now that we think that they're linear concentrations of energy and part of a field of energy as opposed to just a line. What we're actually dowsing is the edges of these really concentrated areas as, uh, as opposed to a definitive line. But these, these linear concentrations do stretch in great circles right around the Earth. And why should people want to know more about um, the mapping of energy lines? Uh, I think in, 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 in Bristol it's a project uh, that, that we've got on to go at the moment is, is as I mentioned earlier, where these energy lines are uh, becomes important with regards to where you live and where you work. Uh, there are some fantastic benefits to be had by working and living on these energy lines, especially where they cross over. Uh, what we now believe is they accentuate emotions. So if you, if you want to have a, a really successful life uh, and do your goal setting, if you like, uh, there's, there's, people might have come across a thing called the law of attraction and, and the secret where you can actually uh, set up a, a frame of mind on these places and we find that when you're actually at these places and you do this there's a far greater chance of success if you intensify your emotions these theses is magnified at, this, at these places so if you know where you live and where you work and where these energy lines are uh, you can get fantastic inspiration, excellent creativity, wonderful ideas for your business, for your life, and, and your fortune, if you like, not just financial, but success in your purpose in life will be greatly enhanced if you practice things like the law of attraction and the secret at these energy lines uh, uh, where they cross over. So finding where they cross over in Bristol becomes uh, a, a, an amazing quest for individuals as well as for groups. Can anyone douse? Absolutely. Everyone can be taught to dance, and even the, the most God-fearing Africana in Africa that I come across, who, who would not believe anything like this, found that he could also douse for water, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we could check that because we were dowsing uh, the water that ran in pipes underneath the mine lawns. You couldn't see the pipes, but you could douse them because they were both below the surface and they, and they led to sprinkler systems. And he found he too could douse exactly where the pipes were. So what's the actual science behind this, Rory? Yes, Perry. The, the, the science is uh, an interesting question here. Uh, you have to start looking at what these things are, what the reality is, before we can start uh, saying what the science is. But uh, when we look at the observations that can be made on these energy lines, people have studied them, they've taken... Uh, radiation uh, readings at these places where there's energy lines, they've, they've taken uh, electromagnetic instrument detectors there, and what we find is that uh, at some points there is a connection between these energy lines and radiation and electromagnetics, but there's never a continuing uh, connection between them. It's like there's an indirect connection, but it's not always switched on. Um, if we start looking at what these lines could be, we, we, we're left with thinking, well, what is the four forces that you find in the universe? And scientists will tell you that there's the electromagnetic force, there's the, the weak and the strong force inside the nucleus of the atom, and there's also the gravitational force. Uh, all those forces can be measured very easily with detection equipment. And when we measure these things on, the, on these lines, we don't find anything that continually says, well, this is it. So we have to look further than that. In fact, we've got to start looking at at science itself and uh, one of the wonderful things that I've had over the 10 years that I've been constantly dowsing these energy lines every day is that the people that I come across and the people that I meet almost uh, uh, by coincidence or serendipitously if you like uh, you, you meet people that bring information into your life at the right time and I was very fortunate to meet an amazing scientist who actually lives in Bathford who had spent the last 24 years of his life um, questioning uh, the current understanding of science and viewpoint and, and coming up with a new theory on the creation of the universe himself. And he would never have started this but for the fact that the current Western way of thinking in science is seriously flawed. And I want to mention a couple of them now. Um, what we've got at the moment in Western science is that the root of it all in physics at the bottom of physics, if you like, there are two theories. One is the quantum theory and one is relativity theory. Quantum theory is a study of the movements of all the tiny things, in, uh, atoms and electrons and particles, which is completely random and indeterminate in nature. And yet, on the other side, you have the classical theory of, of, of relativity, which is 
what's going on on a large scale with planets and galaxies. And all this is moved, these things are in a relative, classical, predictable manner. And there's no way they found how to match the predictable side to the randomness. And in fact, over 60 years, these theoretical physicists have completely failed to link these two things up. And what that tells us is actually, in fact, Western science that has no foundations to it. They can say nothing with any certainty. Not one doctor, not one scientist can say this is true or this is not true. Which is a great shame because a lot of them do tend to think of things as factual. In fact, a lot of things like relativity now has become a bit of a, re a religion to, to scientists. And uh, if you question relativity, it's like questioning uh, uh, a sacred held belief of theirs. Uh, but unfortunately, in other parts of the world, uh, they're slightly more receptive to this. And there is a new theory on the creation of the universe which doesn't need relativity theory. And that actually sets up another interesting side which talks about a level of reality which is deeper than the quantum level. In fact, it's a level of reality they call the subquantum that actually produces the particles on the quantum level. Now, this subquantum level of reality we now believe is where the, the actual formation of these energy lines can be generated and it's like a sort of skeletal structure that it can hold information on and this particular new theory is called the big breed theory it's by a scientist called ron pearson and as i said he's been doing it for 24 years and he literally started out because he found some horrible mistakes in the workings of the big bang theory uh, and even today, they'll admit, the physicists, and they don't like admitting it, that there's something called the problem of the cosmological constant. It sounds a bit, bit, bit deep, but uh, I'll explain literally. They have a big bang, a massive explosion, which explodes into a vacuum. And that vacuum is supposed to take this huge explosion and then, after a few seconds, shut off. And they have to shut off this explosion, otherwise we'd never get any planets or galaxies ever far forming at all. And, and the problem is they don't know how this shut off and the energy that had to be put in to shut this off is something they completely have no idea how to explain and that's called the problem of the cosmological constant there are other serious problems in the big bang floor but ron actually spent some time thinking of a new way and his new theory the big breed theory actually begins to explain how intelligence could arise at this subquantum level and that intelligence that cosmic consciousness can go on and create the, the higher, larger level of matter at the, the quantum level. So we're now thinking these energy lines are stemming from this intelligent ether at this subquantum level. And he's got all the mathematics behind it. He's had his papers peer-reviewed in, in Russia and in other countries around the world. We have a top Nobel Prize winning physicist, Professor uh, Jacobson, uh, Josephson, in, in the Cavendish Labs in, in Cambridge, who cannot find a flaw in his theory. There are no flaws in his theory of quantum gravity. And that's what makes it really special because actually his theory on the creation of the universe supports all these Eastern philosophies. It expo explains how intelligence arose behind the universe, explains things like psychic phenomena, survival after death, it explains things like healing, telepathy, non-locality. It explains all the things that actually in fact are going on in the, with the CIA in the world where they're using psychics to find what's going on in the world with remote influence and remote viewing. And, and, and so we know that it works. Um, we now have a science on how it works. And what's really interesting is these energy lines seem to be the structure upon which matter can sit. And it's a, it's a fabric which is created. And, and this underlying intelligence creates many worlds that sit within worlds. It, going back to the mapping project in Bristol, is there anything particularly interesting about Bristol area that you've already found out? Well, yes, there is. And, 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 and again, firstly, we, we, we found that these lines uh, or linear concentrations do appear to go to areas that had uh, significance in, in, in our ancestors' past. And even recently, uh, in fact, I was only mapping just recently and I found uh, one of the energy lines I was following went, I uh, just literally go around the corner and I suddenly come across St. John's Conduit, uh, a, a holy well, not far from the centre, and you've got this energy line running straight through it. And we still find new things like that coming along, but there's a ancient stones in, in Redland area, uh, there's uh, concentrations uh, on Castle Green, it looks like that's an interesting place, but one particular interesting place is, uh, is Temple Church. 
uh, Temple Church has several energy lines running through it, and that throws a very interesting connection up with the, these energy lines and, and the Knights Templar, which we see cropping up all over Europe and and, and, the, and the UK. So, um, how do you think the Knights Templar knew about energy lines? Well, the Knights Templar was supposed to have discovered a great secret in the Temple of Jerusalem when they did, when they went there on all their uh, adventures. Um, what we what that secret was, we'll never be quite sure. But what has happened is what you look at what the Knights Templar have been doing, and they're responsible for building some amazing pieces of architecture, like Chartres Cathedral, and, and the dimensions inside these uh, other churches and cathedrals that they built all over Europe always seem to have the same sort of dimensions. And there's a connection here to masons and masonry, uh, and the importance of, of of creating a perfect area for sound and for resonance. But what's really interesting is these, these, these places like Chartres are on energy line concentrations where there's nodes. Uh, in fact, I mentioned earlier a place called Royston where there's a cave near, in, near Luton and four major energy lines that run through that, including the St. Michael and Mary, are found right in this cave. And inside this cave you can see all the, the, the drawings that the Knights Templar have done. But their, their, their UK headquarters was not far from the, the Royston. Ne nearby here, Temple Coombe in, in Somerset, uh, and, and a lot of other temple sites you find there's a connection to these energy lines. Now what we think is that they discovered that these energy lines helped with praying and meditating. And, and it improved the chances of success at creating new realities. And, and this is what was really interesting, that when we began to see that actually the connection between sacred sites, like Bath Abbey, where there's a really strong node in Bath Abbey, and, and another strong node in, in Avebury, these appear to be sites where groups of people come together and pray or meditate. And when done effectively, with the right sounds, it appears that this is a greater chance for new realities to occur. Even in Bath, where you have the Roman baths, you found lead tablets in these baths. Now, before the Roman baths were there, this was a really sacred spot where the Druids used to be there. And it was known as a place where people got healed. But you see these lead tablets written by soldiers. Roman soldiers who, who write things in there, the, the typical curses, well the person who stole my coat, I hope he, he, he gets killed in the next battle, these things like that. And, and these were desired wishes, as though they knew that if they threw this in, or they put in a curse, it would have a greater chance of success. Creating new realities was the name of the game, and that's exactly what you do when you pray and you meditate, you desire new realities. So is it possible that they knew, that the Knights Templar knew that these really strong energy lines could increase the chance of success for what you prayed for, for what you meditated for, for increasing your goals. And maybe that was why the Templars were searching for the most powerful place in Europe, but they never found it. So what are the implications for people living in Bristol of the energy lines? Yeah, I mentioned before that if you've got energy lines going through where you live, where you sleep, where you work, what we found already is that these can really seriously accentuate your emotions. Now, it's great if you're a happy, positive person because you are just going to find you're just completely boosted by these energy lines. But also, if you're negative and you're depressed, it will enhance these emotions because these energy lines aren't, aren't naturally positive or negative. They're sort of, they don't have a good and a bad. They accentuate what they find. And if you're, if you're having trouble and you're going through a bad period of your life and not, not happy, these energy lines can make it a lot worse. And there's something else about these energy lines which we've begun to realize is that these energy lines aren't still. They have a natural movement from side to side, which gives it a frequency. Typically, six hours moving one way, six hours moving the other way, up to about 25 to 30 percent of the width of the line, you have this movement. So you don't get that movement at the nodes, but what you've got effectively is like between two nodes, it's rather like a rubber band which can be vibrated, like, like a, a guitar string. This vibration at a really low fundamental level will have a resonance. And you, we actually have already found that you can connect to the Pythagorean fifth harmonics at an audible level and connect to the f fundamental frequencies that you find at the, at the energy line movement itself. Now I mention this because these frequencies change. 
they, they have rhythmic patterns and they ch have subtle changes over the year and over the months. And as these frequencies change, it can affect you to a greater and lesser extent. So being aware of the energies and how these cycles change might begin to explain why you're feeling so great and why you're not feeling so good. And as I said, if it's, if it's a problem, you're having difficulty sleeping or you have difficulty living or you're in problems, then come along to the Bristol Dowsers for starters. We'll find out where the energy slides are, whether they run through your house. We can do things for you there. So implications for people where live and work? Absolutely. Find out about these lines. So where can people find out more about the Bristol Mapping Project, Rory? Yeah, there's a, there's a few ways. Um, the Society, the Bristol Dowsers, meet every first and third Friday of the month at the Theosophical Society on 14 Tyndall's Park Road. In fact, tonight we have a meeting which is for int introducers to, to come along for the first time. We'll teach you to do a bit of dowsing at 7 o'clock. So the first and third Fridays we have interesting speakers on, on the third Friday and on the first Friday we actually do the mapping project and we have updates on the mapping project and we, we talk about dowsing for, for new people. So, and if you want to know more about the Bristol Dowsers you can go to the www.bristoldowsers.co.uk website. If you want to know more about what I'm talking about with mapping energy lines and how the energy lines work and all that, you could go to a website called sethseminar.com. That's S E T H seminar, all one word, com. And there you can find lots more information on existing maps that have been done uh, in, in the UK and in other parts of the world and loads more interesting work on, on the lines. And there's a wood book on there called The Key to the Secret of the Ancients, which explains the connections between it all. But there's the two websites. Um, if you're interested in the science uh, that I mentioned earlier, uh, have a look at bigbreed.org. Uh, that's got all the information on the new science, uh, which is fascinating stuff. And we've got huge arguments going on across uh, on emails around the world at the moment between physicists as to what's right and what's wrong. Um, so that's bigbreed.org. But come along tonight. Uh, it's a meeting, 14 Tyndall's Park Road in, in uh, Clifton, uh, and that's at the Theosophical Society buildings. Very welcome at 7 o'clock. It's only a uh, £5 entry, and um, yeah, there's no members. You just come along. What else would you like to see come out of the Bristol Mapping Project? Uh, well, to start, I'd like to see a lot more people dowsing and coming along to our society meeting yeah. because the more the merrier. And, and, and the wonderful thing about uh, what we're, we're getting to, everybody who lives in Bristol who's on an energy line will be really attuned to that energy line and they will be able to find it so much more easily. So whereas I could spend you know, the next five years mapping Bristol's energy lines, uh, if I've got other people there who are attuned to certain energy lines and, and they can map those and we can learn to map those from them, then we can get on them much faster. So uh, that would be great that more people come out of it. But I think what I'd also like to see is, is, is this greater awareness of, of, uh, of energy and energy lines where we live uh, because that will change people uh, for the good everywhere. And um, where else has been mapped? Yeah, uh, I mentioned slightly earlier that I used to live in, in Chippenham and uh, around six or seven years I spent every day mapping on the way back from work, spending 30 minutes uh, at a time. So there's a huge rectangular area uh, that covers Avebury, uh, Swindon, Bath, Chippenham, uh, Devizes. Uh, you can see that map on the sethseminar.com website if you search for it. And that, that just actually covers the 20 pace wide energy lines. I, I mentioned there's different widths of energy lines. You have 20 pace wide, roughly 20 pace, roughly 10 pace wide, 5 pace wide, 4 pace wide. And the 4 pace wide line, interestingly, connect to the moon and the position of the moon, but that's that's perhaps another story. But, um, yeah, so that, that's uh, mapping on a, on a minute scale that we're doing in, in Bristol, where we're looking at each street, uh, has been done in the city of Bath. It's also been done in other big cities, hasn't it? In London, York, and uh, Oxford. Uh, what's been mapped there are mm. the ley lines, oh, right. yeah. not not the actual Earth energy lines. No, but um, supernatural encounters are reported on the road from Arndale to Beetham Church in Cumbria. Um, have you come across that before, or are we talking about ley lines there? Uh, Supernatural occurrences yeah. are found uh, on energy lines and energy line intersections. Um, 
uh, you, you quite often find uh, people who've had miraculous uh, healing. In fact, one of the, the, the very powerful centers in the UK is found at St. Michael's Mount in, uh, in Cornwall, where four Earth energy lines cross over. That's uh, St. Michael and St. Mary and the Apollo and the Athena, which were, were mapped by a, a very famous, uh, wonderful diaser I knew called Hamish Miller unfortunately passed away a few years ago. Uh, but at that place in St. Michael's Mount, there were, there were loads of uh, uh, tales of people who'd come away healed, and one lady come away who was sight restored as well even. So they, they, you do find these supernatural, well, they're probably just extremely natural in some ways, effects that do occur in some of these places, yeah. And there's other places abroad, actually, like Gozo in Malta and Karnak, in Brittany, well, I've, I've been to both those places. Have you ever been to any of those? Not, not to those places. Mm. I'm aware of of Karnak mm. and, and uh, these very, very long lines of stones. In fact, we do know that there is a, a series of energy lines, large energy lines, running uh, in alignment with the same direction of stones that you find at uh, at Karnak. Uh, but as I just mentioned earlier, these energy lines are all over the place. But what's really interesting is that we've got these thick the widths of energy lines and and the what we find in this country, the, the largest and widest lines are th around 30 paces wide, and we've got about 15 to 20 of these lines in this country. But in the world, there are bigger ones. And the biggest energy lines you can get are really 50 paces wide, and there are only six of these in the world. And that's really fascinating. And where they run and where they cross over, you get to some really, really very, very powerful sacred places. Where are they? Uh, the actual locations of those I can't reveal to oh, you at right. the moment. Yes. <laughs> because uh, th they're very sensitive. Mm. Um, but they will be revealed uh, in not too distant future. In fact, one of them is in Europe, and mm. we believe that that location in Europe was what the Knights Templar had been looking for. Uh, and there's evidence to suggest that they were looking for this what they call holy grail throughout Europe for many many years and we think they were traveling these energy lines and where they crossed over where they knew they were powerful like in Chartres they built their churches and what we think now is uh, that we'll find out where you are where, you, where the lines are where you're living and you'll be able to dowse them yourself. Is there a, a national association for dowsing? Yes, the uh, British Society of Dowsers uh, has been going for uh, nearly 100 years now. Um, they meet regularly every year, and they've got uh, hundreds of members, actually thousands of members, uh, from all walks of life. And, and dowsing is, is done not just for energy lines, not just for water, uh, but you have people who do dowsing for archaeology. And uh, they've even worked with the time team people for a while, but they can douse uh, where ditches are, where walls are, and, and things like that. And they, they, they report quite interestingly that the, the people that dowse uh, for archaeological remains tend to have their specialities. And so one person's particularly good at dowsing the Romans, and, and one particularly good at dowsing the Stone Age. And uh, it, it seems that, that, again, the resonances and the skills that you have are differing slightly from one person to the other. So, yes, they, they meet, uh, and, and you can find, if you, if you put into the search engine, the British Society of Dowsers, you'll find more about them. So, um, and you can also find things which people have lost, don't you? Well, I can't, oh. but dowsers can. Yeah. I haven't tried to do that, so I haven't uh, started to learn how to do that. Mm. But yes, that's a skill that some dowsers can, uh, can begin to grow and learn, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and also different types of metal? Absolutely, yeah. Um, what we find now are, are dowsers in Russia being used with uh, um, oil uh, and gas companies and also uh, for um, mining companies, uh, exploration mining companies use dowsers now. And they, they use them in aircraft. You can douse at, uh, at height in aircraft. In fact, you know, I, I, I can douse now traveling at uh, 100 miles an hour in a train. Really? It's possible to do that once mm -hmm. you get accustomed to certain things. So dowsers are being used for a variety of different things. But, for instance, as I said, I, I couldn't go out and douse for gold mm -hmm. until I've built up my skill at dowsing for gold and I've acclimatized, attuned to the, the, the resonance that's given off by gold. Mm -hmm. Then I would be able to become better and better at dowsing for gold. But there's not really a lot of gold around here. So. Yeah.
This is BCFM on 93.2 FM. I'm Perry and I've been talking to Rory Duff about the Bristol Energy Line Mapping Project. Um, which, uh, do you have any other projects coming up in the, pa in the future, uh, Rory? Well, we're always interested in mapping uh, energy lines, especially the, the largest energy lines. I mentioned uh, the six really big energy lines in the world. We call them the Emperor Dragons. And one of the places where they cross over is in, is in Europe. And we've just set up a new charity called the World Harmony Trust. And we're looking to set up a spiritual learning and development center at this special, special node. Uh, and create uh, what would be the first of many, hopefully, of what we call nature churches, where um, people from all the denominations can come along and, and pray and, and meditate together as one uh, and benefit from this fantastic energy that's pouring out through this world. Because there's no doubt that the human interaction with the consciousness connecting to this, this huge, vast amount of energy that's coming through can make major positive differences to this world. And so that's the next, uh, the next challenge, it's the next venture. Uh, but right now it's, it's to get people involved in the Bristol mapping project, uh, get them aware of these earth energies, teach them how to douse. So come along to the, to the Bristol uh, meetings on the first and third Friday of the month. In fact, tonight, come along tonight, 7 o'clock, uh, get onto to the website and find out more. Right. It's been so interesting talking to you, Rory. Thanks very much for coming along.